Hello, in this video I'm going to explain how to calculate moments. This is a 4 meter horizontal rod, the hinge is here, and there's a vertical force of 3 newtons applied at the end of the rod. The pivot length is clearly 4 meters, so the moment of this 3 newtons force about the hinge here is 3 newtons times 4 meters equals to 12 newton meters. If the 3 newton force is applied horizontally instead, then clearly the perpendicular distance is zero. So the moment of this force about the hinge is 3 meters times the zero perpendicular distance, giving us uh, zero newton meters. The result is not surprising since the 3 newton force applied this way will have no turning effect about the hinge here. What if the rod is inclined 30 degrees below the horizontal? then the perpendicular distance between the line of action of this force and the pivot is no longer 4 meters but 4 cosine 30 degrees. So the moment of this force about the hinge is 3 newtons times 4 cosine 30 degrees. If the 3 newton force is applied horizontally then the perpendicular distance between the line of action of this force and the hinge is going to be 4 sine 30 degrees. The moment of this force about the hinge here is going to be 3 newtons times 4 sine 30 degrees. Basically, if you have a vertical force, you should be looking for a horizontal perpendicular distance. Whereas if you have a horizontal force, you should be looking for a vertical perpendicular distance. What if the 3 newton force is applied with an angle of elevation of 40 degrees? I'm going to show you three different methods to calculate the same moment. The first method is to figure out that the perpendicular distance between the line of action of this force and the hinge is this length here. If you really have difficulty visualizing this perpendicular distance, then maybe you can try rotating the paper until this force is vertical and then you look for a horizontal perpendicular distance. Then we have to figure out that this angle is actually 70 degrees. Um, it involves corresponding angles of parallel lines and opposite angles. Using trigonometry, we can figure out that the perpendicular distance is 4 sine 70 degrees. The moment of this force about the hinge is 3 newtons times 4 sine 70 degrees. The second method involves resolving this 3 newton force into two perpendicular components, one along the rod and one perpendicular to the rod. The angle between the 3 newton force and the rod is actually 70 degrees. So the component of this force parallel to the rod is 3 cosine 70 degrees, whereas its component perpendicular to the rod is 3 sine 70 degrees. Again, if you really have difficulty uh, figuring out these two perpendicular components, maybe you can try rotating the paper until the rod is horizontal. So you are just looking for the horizontal and vertical components of this force here. This component will have no turning effect about the hinge here. And it's only the perpendicular component that has a turning effect and its perpendicular distance is simply 4 meters. So the moment exerted by this 3 newton force is actually just 3 sine 70 degrees times 4 meters. The third method is quite popular with students and they tend to make this careless mistake. Uh, let me explain why. Many students will resolve the 3 newton force into its horizontal and vertical components. They will then figure out that the perpendicular distance between this component of force and the pinch is this length here, 4 cosine 30 degrees. What they missed out is that this component, the horizontal component, also has a perpendicular distance uh, with the hinge. So this horizontal component also has a turning effect about this hinge here. So the moment exerted by the horizontal component about the hinge, which is um, 3 times cosine 40 degrees, times the perpendicular distance of 4 sine 30 degree, degrees should also be included in our calculation. And yes, uh, we simply sum them up because
both these components are creating a anti-clockwise movement. If you know your trigo identity, then you can simplify this thing into just 12 sine 70 degrees. Okay, so I've shown you three different methods. The first one is kind of like resolving the rod to suit the force. The second one is kind of like um, resolving the force to suit the rod. The third one is kind of like, ah, let's just resolve everything horizontally and vertically and solve from there. Okay, that's all. Ta-ta!